Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to be proving and disproving which oils really have suitable SPF values. I'm conducting this test today because unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation on the internet proposing that certain plant oils can provide effective sun protection. They can't, and I'm doing this test so I can prove it because it's misinformation for consumers and it puts consumers at risk to believe that these oils could provide them suitable protection. I'm going to start by putting some pre-prepared test strips out in the sun. And this is the exact same version. So I have two of these pre-prepared. I'll show you how I prepared these in a moment. I'm just gonna put these out in the sun for 20 minutes while I talk you through some crucial UV facts. So now I'm going to prepare these UV test wristbands. They are called sunscreen bands wristbands from Intelligo Technologies AB in Sweden. And I've been provided these by my good friends at Eurofins Dermatest who do a lot of UV testing. Now just so that you don't uh, think that this is a one-off chance, I'm actually preparing two pages of identical test strips so that we can be sure of the results that we obtain. To this first strip, I'm adding nothing. To this next strip, I'm going to add two drops of a standard SPF 50 plus sunscreen. Now I've actually spilt a little bit of the dispersion on this strip here, so it'll be interesting to see what that result provides us. Now I'm doing this indoors because when UV light hits these strips, they will start to change colour depending on how much UV light actually gets through. So now it's off to the beach. Did you know that Australia has one of the highest skin cancer rates in the world? And many of you probably know I live in Australia. I actually live in Queensland, which has the highest skin cancer rate of any state in the world. Part of that is to do with our beautiful weather and our very extreme UV index. So I've put these test strips out in the sun today so that you can see in 20 minutes just how effective they are or are not at protecting our skin. UV ratings on products give an idea of how much protection they'll provide from the sun. For example, when I'm out in the sun like this, I've got about 10 to 15 minutes maximum without protection before I start to burn. And that's known as one minimum erythemal dose. So when I'm using sun protection products with an SPF of 50, it means I could be out in the sun up to 50 times as long before I'm receiving one full MED. Now, a lot of consumers get confused by ratings and think that they have full protection for that entire time, and that's not correct. If my minimum erythemal dose is 10 minutes and I apply an SPF 50, it means for that first 10 minutes, I have got full protection. 
But then after 10 minutes, 1 50th of the sun's rays will actually penetrate through my skin and cause damage. By the time it's been 20 minutes, 2 50ths of the sun's rays hitting my skin will actually be able to penetrate. So by the time five MEDs have elapsed, or 50 minutes in my case, it means that about one tenth of the sun's rays hitting my skin will actually penetrate and cause damage. This is why it's so important to reapply sunscreens regularly, because as time elapses, more and more of the sun's rays will be able to penetrate my skin. There are two types of UV rays that really cause damage to us. There's UVA. Now these particular rays cause damage you can't see, but it will turn into skin cancers and melanomas later because it damages the DNA. There's UVB, and this causes the reddening that you see. Now a product needs to have at least one third UVA protection of its SPF rating. The SPF rating helps us measure how much time we have in the sun before we start to burn. But remember, UVA is the really damaging rays that cause skin cancer and DNA damage. So a product that has an SPF of 30 on the label means that it would have to have at least SPF 10 protection against UVA. So now I'm just going to enjoy some of this beautiful weather in the shade while I wait for that 20 minutes to elapse and then we'll take a look at these test strips. And now the results are in. So just to make sure that we didn't get false results, I did of course do exactly the same on two different pieces of paper. Let's take a look at what we found. This product here, the SPF 50 Plus, has provided total protection. You can see here the zinc oxide dispersion also provided a fair bit of protection. But none of the so-claimed oils that are able to provide UV protection have done anything at all. Now remember the one where I dripped the zinc oxide dispersion over it? That was over the coconut oil and look at the impact that just dropping a little bit of that dispersion has done when it's spread and mixed with the oil. So again you can see the zinc oxide dispersion has provided a lot of protection and it's even passed that protection over very effectively when it was dripped onto another strip. But other than the SPF 50 plus and the zinc oxide dispersion, none of these plant oils have provided sufficient protection. And this is only after 20 minutes in the sun. So you can imagine using these so-called protective oils on your skin for longer than that provides absolutely no sun protection at all. Well, I hope that's been informative for you to see that these plant oils really don't provide the protection that you'll read about on the internet. Be careful what you read on the internet, particularly when it comes to protecting your skin. Happy formulating.